This extension exercise for Module 2 asks you to look in some detail at just one of the life cycle issues that might need to be addressed during conceptual design of a domestic dwelling. We asked you to look at the ability of the system, i.e. in this case a single storey house, to be built to satisfy the current needs but be able to be modified to support future needs during the utilisation phase of the dwelling's life cycle. The way we ask you the question was that the current financial constraints of the owners mean that they can only afford to build the house as a single storey capable of supporting themselves and up to three small children. However, the owners wish to have three or four children in total, so the house may be required to support up to four children in the future, as well as one set of the owner's parents in approximately 10 years' time. Before we continue, let's just pause for a second and observe. The scenario stated that the solution for the problem is a single-storey house, with the ability to be modified as the owner's future needs change. It's assumed that this is what the owner has decided as a result of the consideration of a range of other options that might satisfy their needs. Remember, in systems engineering, it's important not to press ahead with any particular physical solution before exploring all the valid options. For example, the owners could have considered whether an apartment could be purchased with an agreement with a complex owner to acquire nearby or adjacent apartments in five to ten years. Or alternatively, the owners could rent a cheap apartment that accommodates their current needs and potentially up to two children, while they save a larger deposit to allow them to build their final solution. Or, they could still build a single storey house, but instead of building upwards, they might build downwards and build a large basement area that would be able to provide the required space. Similarly, they could build a single storey house and look to purchase the adjacent block of land in five or so years' time, and then extend the house over two blocks of land. This may provide a greater return if they intend to sell the house and downsize once the children are left home. Well, having said all of that, let's accept the fact that the owners have been through that feasibility analysis and they've decided that the best physical option for them is to be able to construct a single storey house initially with the intention to build on a second storey at some stage in the future. Before we consider what the conceptual design considerations are for initial design in order to support those future modifications, let's better understand what is actually needed. Let's assume that with a single storey, the house can support three young children, four years or so under, and the two owners. Therefore, the modification has to consider the additional child as well as two grandparents. However, not as obvious, the modification also has to consider that these four children will shortly become four teenagers and then become four young adults as they grow. These requirements will drive a number of considerations during conceptual design, both for the initial design as well as for the future modifications. Let's look at some of those issues. Let's look at a few examples. First, the children. The changing ages of the children can have a significant effect on the placement of their bedrooms. For example, when the children are babies, it's likely the parents would want the rooms near to theirs for attention throughout the night. As the children grow, the need to be close to the parents' bedroom lessens and the bedrooms can be further apart. When they're in their late teens and as young adults, it's likely that the parents would by far prefer the children's rooms to be much further away. Similarly, the size of the rooms may vary, since babies only need a small storage space, a cot and a change table. As they grow and start school, they need room for a desk perhaps and for shelving, for books and other things. During conceptual design, consideration should be given to whether the modification will provide larger rooms or alternate locations for the older children, noting that there's a five-year window from when it's expected to be funded and when the grandparents are expected to move in. Then, of course, when the grandparents move in, there'll be a number of options for where they live. If the second storey is to be provided, is that going to be provided exclusively for the grandparents, or will they require common facilities with the owners, that is, will they share a lounge room, perhaps, or share a kitchen? If they'll share facilities, then the initial design will need to cater for four adults and four children growing to adulthood. Alternatively, if the grandparents have their own facilities, then that will drive consideration for the location and the placement of the initial design of things like wet areas. We'll discuss this shortly. It can be assumed that the grandparents may eventually have some restrictions on their mobility. So far we've considered the second story might be an option for the grandparents, but with the addition of that story, it might be more reasonable to have the grandparents live on the ground floor and move the owners and children to the second floor. 
This could result in savings in the initial design, as during the first 10 years the cooking requirements, for example, are likely to be less, so a small kitchen could be built downstairs to cater for four young children and two adults. And when the second storey is built, a large primary kitchen could be built upstairs, and the downstairs original kitchen could be made available to the grandparents on the ground floor. Of course, there are other considerations. Well, of course, there are other many considerations. Let's just look at a few. If we're going to place a second floor, the structural strength of the lower floor needs to be considered in, in the initial design. The lower floors must be a sufficient structural strength to cope with the initial building, as well as then to allow a second floor to be added on. The initial preliminary design phase must consider that planned addition, even if it's not going to occur in the first phase particularly if the intention is to have a very large open area on the bottom floor with a long span. Similarly, the placement of utilities should be considered in the initial preliminary design. If there is an additional bathroom and kitchen placed on the second storey, then the location of the downstairs wet area should be considered to support any intended location upstairs. Most house designs try to place all the wet areas in close proximity to avoid running pipes all over the house. So having any upstairs plumbing located directly above the downstairs plumbing will save significant costs. Similarly, power and lighting locations can be considered at a high level in conceptual design to minimise the cost associated with the second storey as we move into preliminary design. Additionally, the initial design should consider the capacity of the pipes, of the wiring and so on, to be able to cope with the increased flow as we move from one floor to two. There are also likely to be constraints on how a second storey can be built, both formal council type constraints and then self-imposed constraints to keep the peace with neighbours. For example, if there are existing houses on adjacent blocks, the placement of windows may invade neighbours' privacy. The size of the second storey also may block a view of a lake or an ocean which could significantly devalue a neighbour's property. Alternatively, the second storey may not block a view, but it may cast a large shadow in a neighbour's yard. These issues need to be taken into account in the initial design so that the uh, final design has already had them accounted for. There are other issues. What about stairwells, for example? When the second storey is added, it's reasonable to assume that there'll be some level of internal access. If the stairwell is to replace a room, is that function still required? If so, where or how will it be replaced? If there's a vacant space allocated, how can it best be used during the initial design so it isn't wasted space until the second storey is added? We mentioned before parking. Well, parking will actually cause us perhaps some considerable issue. How will parking of those motor vehicles be maintained or be managed as we grow? Currently there could be one, maybe two cars initially. If all the children stay until adulthood and the grandparents have a car themselves, there could be up to seven vehicles that need to be parked at the house. Will the initial design provide a garage and the upgrade provide a large carport? Or will the front yard be concreted to allow parking over the entire front yard? Is the house placed far enough back on the block to allow the space for cars, particularly for seven? And of course, this also assumes that there's only seven cars. There could actually be recreation vehicles such as a motorbike and a boat. During design, the initial design, the placement of the house on the entire block must accommodate the second uh, upgraded life of the, of the house, not just the initial design. Lastly, if the owners know of one future upgrade, are there other upgrades required to the house? What the owners envisaged and budgeted it for may be significantly less than what is required as a result of thinking about the whole issue more deeply during conceptual and preliminary design. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Module 2 extension exercises. Again, we hope you have shown that just how useful it is to spend some time in planning during conceptual design activities.